Hey, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Ivy, and today I'm going to be doing my August wrap-up and September TBR. So I'm going to be talking about the shows and movies that I watched in August, as well as the books that I read. So let's start with shows. First, we have Broadchurch Seasons 1 and 2 on Netflix. It is British, and it is a small-town murder mystery. This young boy, I think he's 11, named Danny has been murdered. These two detectives are trying to solve the case and oh my god it's so good. The setting is fantastic. It's just like this small beach town where everyone knows everyone. I had so much fun with all of the suspense with this show and there would be times when I would be screaming at our TV like what the fork is going on. I was very into it. Season one was definitely better than season two. There's three seasons. I haven't watched the third one yet, but so far my favorite season is season one. The ending to season one wasn't absolutely insane, but it was still really good and really satisfying. Another great thing about this show is Obviously, it's about this mystery, but it also has so many characters, and it balances the characters so well. There's also so much emotion involved, and like, you really get to see how this kid getting killed has impacted the town. Like, it's not just, oh, we need to solve this case, and then once we do, everything will be fine. Like, no, this family lost their son, this town is like turning against each other. It's crazy, but it's so, so good. Another thing is the music is absolutely fantastic. It makes you so nervous, but like in the best way possible. I gave Broadchurch seasons one and two five out of five stars. And yes, it has made me cry multiple times. The next thing that I watched was Buffy the Vampire Slayer season two. So we rented this on Amazon Prime. I cannot express to you how amazing this show is. It's about this girl named Buffy. She's in high school and she lives in Sunnydale, which happens mm -hmm. to be located on the Hellmouth, which is basically where a bunch of demons and stuff are always popping up and, you know, killing people and stuff. Buffy is the Slayer. It is ridiculous and cheesy in literally the best way possible. Like, I just... It's so good. I don't even know how to describe this show to you. In every single episode, there are fantastic fight scenes and action scenes, and it never ever gets old. This show is so incredibly original, and I do not understand how they do it. It is so well written. It's actually insane. It's hilarious. There's so many funny lines, and it'll also, it's so self-aware too, and it'll reference to old episodes and make jokes about them, and it's just, ugh, it's perfection. The acting is fantastic. The casting is fantastic. And I am so emotionally attached to every single character on the show. I don't even know how it happened, but all of a sudden I'm in love with all of them and I don't want anything bad to happen to any of them. It's also very emotional at times. I gave it 5 out of 5 stars and it did not make me cry, but I've come close. Okay, so movies. The first movie that I watched this month was Dumplin'. Um, this was a rewatch. It's on Netflix. This is about a high schooler named Willow Dean Dixon who is a self-proclaimed fat girl and she joins the town's annual beauty pageant to make a statement. This movie's just so much fun. It makes me smile so big every time. Not that I've seen it more than twice. It really does change my view of beauty pageants like drastically and that's what I really like about this movie. Also it's just it's so feel good. It's so like love yourself and be yourself and it's just it's a really fun time. My only complaint is that it can be a little too cheesy at times and it was a little too long but I gave Dumplin' four out of five stars and it did not make me cry. So next I watched Iron Man because I am trying to do a rewatch of the MCU. It's gonna take me probably an entire year to rewatch the entire thing but if it takes me an entire year it takes me an entire year. It's fine. Obviously this movie is amazing. <laughs> I forgot how over the top like the early Marvel stuff is. Not that like the older, not older, the newer movies aren't over the top, but Iron Man is just so ridiculous and I love it for that. I had so much nostalgia watching this. I don't even know when I watched this for the first time, but it came out in 2008. Obviously this is the movie that started it all, so again, nostalgia. The ending of this movie is just so iconic 
and I also picked up on so many things that I was like, oh my god, they referenced this in, like, Endgame and stuff, and it just made me appreciate Tony Stark's arc so much more. Like, he starts out as such a butthole, let me tell you. And even in this movie alone, his arc is incredible. I also forgot how awesome Pepper Potts is. Like, I've always liked her but in the later movies she's just kind of there and I don't really remember why she's there but now I do after re-watching this movie. So I gave this 5 out of 5 stars. It's just ugh, a classic and I did not cry. Parasite. I've been wanting to watch this movie for so long. Obviously it won like every single Oscar or something. That's not true but like it won a lot. So I was expecting a thriller, and that is definitely not what I got. I still really liked it though. It was kind of slow and boring at times, and that's the only reason why I did not give it 5 out of 5 stars, but we'll get to that in a second. First half was definitely more, not really lighthearted, but there was definitely more humor and stuff in the first half. Then the second half comes, and holy crap, this movie gets intense fast. All of a sudden, there was just all this social commentary, which again, there was some in the first half, but the second half was just... It hit you like a truck. The ending was absolutely insane, so disturbing, and I will- I still think about it, not that I watched it that long ago, but I still think about it regularly. How it's just- it makes such a statement, and I honestly don't want to tell you much else, because it's really a movie that everyone should see, as long as you are old enough, because it's really disturbing. But I gave it 4 out of 5 stars, and it did not make me cry. Next is Dear John. I did not like this one. It's a romance. The guy named John is a soldier and he's overseas and they're writing letters back and forth. It was entertaining at some level, but I just... It fell really flat for me. Yes, there were a few things that made it unique, but I was just so not into it that I couldn't care less. Like, I was just sitting there, and this stuff that's supposed to be, like, super sad and upsetting, I was just kind of just there, and I was like, oh, okay. One thing that I loved was the girl from Mamma Mia. I love her so much. I don't even know what her name is, because I'm a horrible person, but she's awesome. I gave it two out of five stars, because it wasn't like a horrible movie. It just wasn't for me. It was just boring and pointless and kind of dumb. It did not make me cry. The last thing that I watched was Call Me By Your Name. Oh, what a stark difference. It's a story about a boy who is kind of realizing a lot about himself, and it's a gay romance, and and it was so good. I can really see why people love this movie so much. It's definitely very artsy and I do not think it's for everybody. That being said, the setting was absolutely beautiful. The music was just, oh, so good. The story was just so heartbreaking and it really, really hit me hard. Timothy Chalamet was like the star and oh my god he's fantastic like i'd only seen him in little women before but him in this movie i just i was absolutely blown away it was so so good he's so good i love him so much all the ingredients were there for me to really really love this movie but i just liked it i don't know why to be exact i feel like maybe i'm too young for it because it was, there was a lot of, you know, sex stuff. I would love to rewatch it in a few years, maybe. <laughs> I gave it four out of five stars, and it did not make me cry, which is so weird. Okay, so now books. The first thing I read was Lady Midnight by Cassandra Clare. So this is the first book in the Dark Artifices trilogy by her, which is the series that comes after The Mortal Instruments. This trilogy is set in Los Angeles, and it follows Emma Carstairs and the Black Thor Orn family and a bunch of other people, but I'm not going to get too much into it because I did make a video entirely for that book, so if you want to hear more about what I thought about it, I'll put it down there, like the link thing. I gave it how many stars? Four and a half out of five stars. It did not make me cry. And then we have Lord of Shadows by Cassandra Clare, which is the next book. I had an entire video about this book as well filmed and it wasn't edited yet, but I, before recording this, I deleted it because I just, the timing is just not good and it was really stressing me out to get it edited, so I just deleted it and flushed it down the drain. I loved it a lot. It's better than the first one for sure. Ending just... 
yeah, the ending killed me and I cried very, very hard. I was destroyed. I gave it four and a half out of five stars again. And like I said, yes, I did cry quite a bit. Finally, for what I want to read in September, all I'm gonna say is Queen of Air and Darkness, which is the third and final book in the trilogy. I'm in the middle of it, I'm like that far in, but it's like 880 pages, I think. So yeah, it's taking me a while. That's all I'm gonna put in my official TBR because I feel like it's the only one that I'm gonna read this month. But that's okay, you know, we're reading. But that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you have a fantastic day and I will see you next time with another video. Bye.